Hello. Today I'm going to make another quick and very easy growing tunnel to protect uh, my plants from wildlife. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. Even though I want to encourage and support as much wildlife as possible here, I don't want them eating all the food I'm growing for us. Uh, so I need to find a way of protecting our crops uh, whilst also supporting that wildlife. And so my plan is to have plenty of netted tunnels like this, but also to create some hinged covers to go over the beds, which I can use for different crops and at different times of the year. I've created this quite simply by banging uh, poles into the ground, putting these hoops into them and putting some netting over the top and securing it at the ends and then using wood each side to hold the netting down. So I'm going to show you just how quick and easy this is. For the tubes going into the ground, I'm using offcuts uh, from when polytunnel was put up. Uh, so this is an offcut from the staging which I'm going to put into the ground uh, and there are some longer pieces like this. Because I don't have enough of these for the whole garden, I've bought some polytunnel uh, ground tubes. So they're the tubing that goes into the ground to uh, hold a polytunnel uh, in place. And those will work just as well. Uh, they're even longer than this, so I'll be able to secure them uh, even more into the ground. Or I can put them less deeply into the ground, have them uh, sticking out more, and therefore have a slightly higher uh, tunnel. The other thing that I need uh, is a well now is this a lump hammer or a mallet? It's metal and it's, well I'm going to call it a lump hammer, it's heavy. All I need to do now uh, is to knock this into the ground. This raised bed uh, is built on a slope so I'm using the longer ones at the back where the bed is deeper and the shorter ones at the front where it's much shallower. Now the easiest time to do this would be when the bed is empty uh, but I didn't think of it then. So being careful of my fingers, uh, I'm just holding the tube in place. I'm going to give it a good smack. And then my aim uh, is actually to get this lower uh, than the side of the wood um, so that if I'm working, I don't catch myself on it. And then likewise at the front, I'm going to push this in uh, so that it's either flush with or slightly below the corner. Now I will need to be careful um, that I don't catch myself on these tubes. They have got sharp edges on them. That tube was very small, uh, so I've pushed that in quite a long way. I know that you're supposed to hold a sledgehammer uh, back here, but my wrists aren't actually strong enough <laughs> to take the weight. So I've just had to find a way that does work for me. Oh, without a doubt, <laughs> this is quite a good workout. Uh, so this bed is filled um, with a mixture of manure and compost, and it's just got this used duck bedding on the top. Uh, as a mulch and I'm lining up the ones at the back with uh, the ones at the front Whew. <laughs> that was quite hard work so uh, what I've got here are uh, some lengths of MDPE piping uh, it's used as I don't know, electric cable conduits or water or that sort of thing in house building uh, we found these at the back of the old piggeries uh, in our last home and brought them with us. But you can buy this piping. It's quite expensive. Um, so you can also uh, find it at building sites. And uh, whilst I do not suggest uh, that you help yourself, uh, very often if you ask at a building site, um, they'll be happy to give you uh, the offcuts that they don't need. The pipe goes uh, into the hole on one side and into the hole on the other side. And this tubing just anchors it nicely into the ground. I'm beginning to think that maybe the tube on that side isn't long enough and I might need to put a longer one in, but we'll see how it goes. 
So the wildlife that we've got here uh, is great, but there are a lot of squirrels and squirrels get in and dig things up and eat all sorts of things. There are rabbits and we are dealing with the rabbits by putting up a rabbit proof fencing around the areas that we're growing in. I haven't got it here as yet. And then we also have um, pigeons uh, and corvids like crows and magpies, uh, which readily come down, tear at leaves, pull growing onions out of the ground. Uh, there's <laughs> quite a lot of things uh, that want to access our food uh, long before we need to access it. The next thing I need to do uh, is put some netting over this. So you need some netting that's the same length as the bed and then enough netting to go uh, down each side. So I've been quite generous uh, with my allowance in length on the grounds that at some point I might want to use the netting on uh, tunnels that have got taller tubes for taller brassicas. So here's the netting. Uh, I bought this from Gardening Naturally. It's their soft butterfly netting. Uh, so not only uh, will it keep uh, pigeons and crows off my plants, hopefully uh, it will also keep butterflies and moths away. And then it's a matter of uh, folding it or unfolding it um, and laying it out over the hoops, not trapping your gloves inside. I can't remember which way round <laughs> I've op started opening it out. That way, there we go. I like to have the netting so it's got quite a lot on the ground on each side of the bed uh, and also uh, quite a bit at the ends. And to seal the ends, uh, I try and even up the netting uh, over each side and then pull it tight around the bottom and bring those two pieces together and then gather all the netting into a bunch like that. And then I, I use a long cable tie, a zip tie, to secure it into a bunch. And then I use a, a garden staple, so it's a large uh, galvanized steel uh, staple thing, which I put um, over the fixing and then as much as possible, push it in as close to the raised bed there to make that held in place like that. Then I'll repeat it at the other end. So once again, I try and make sure there's about an even amount of the netting um, over each side. And then I'm going to pull it towards me a bit and then just try and keep that tension going all round and gather the netting together. If you don't have a cable tie you can do it equally well uh, with some string or some baler twine. Just be aware that if you use string uh, it will rot uh, as the season goes on. If I want to access the bed uh, to plant things, it's very simple to just lift this up. I can take the pin out of the end and take a whole section off, or I can access uh, a smaller area uh, just by lifting it like this. And then once the netting is on and the plants are in it, I'll put uh, some two by four wood down the sides here. Could also use bricks, but to hold the sides down uh, to stop uh, squirrels getting up underneath. One other thought, uh, make sure that you have weighted or pinned the sides down, otherwise small garden birds uh, could get in there and then get trapped in the netting and that's not what we want. Now I haven't tested this for any length of time yet to see whether uh, squirrels will actually chew through this plastic netting. Uh, I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that they don't. Um, yesterday I planted out uh, some ranunculus into this bed. There's no sign of any attempt to get in. So whether they just haven't noticed or they found the netting and were put off by it, I'm not sure. Over the course of the growing season, uh, I'll come back again and have a look and see how effective it's been 
in the meantime I've still got another four beds to cover and I've got six more raised beds to create uh, in this space here. This whole garden uh, is being created on quite a steep slope uh, so each bed has to be made uh, to fit this particular angle of the hillside and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again next time.